Every day in the USA, people find themselves in court. Good morning. Thank you. This is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the court. Who am I speaking with? Are you Christine? Christine Yes. Uh, Miss Winfrey, I'm seeing you on one case. I would have seen you on both. We've got problems with this room. We got a feedback loop in there. Also present with me is Matea Paycheck from the Public Defender's Office. You were charged with possession of a controlled substance. You pled to use of a controlled substance. And there was a probation violation arraignment scheduled and you failed to appear. So I did a show cause. You failed to appear for that. I did a warrant with a 48 hour hold. And um, and then you got arrested apparently with Jim in Kalamazoo County. So let's see if we can sort this out. When did you get arrested? Yesterday? No, sir. I got arrested um, October the 16th. And that was in Kalamazoo County? No, Calhoun. Um, Calhoun. All right. He said he got arrested in Kalamazoo. They took you to Calhoun. But so you got arrested in Calhoun. Did you have any charges there? Um, I had a warrant for um, uh, theft back in uh, 2018 or 20. Is your Calhoun County case resolved? Yeah, on November the 3rd, it will be. Is that a sentence date? Yes. Is that on a felony or misdemeanor charge? A misdemeanor. All right, in this case, it's a little hard to track this. Your probation agent, Matt Huff, and Matt uh, was here and then he got sidetracked. So Matt, I've got Christine Winfrey here now. He alleges that you were placed on probation on charge of use of methamphetamine and you port, quit reporting. So we set the matter for hearing in June and true to form, you didn't appear for that either. Um, you were put on probation, you didn't appear you were put on probation, I think in January. You didn't appear February, March, April, May, June. Um, we call it falling off the map. So we haven't seen you. So the allegation is that you violated your probation by failing to report. He recommends that we revoke your probation and impose the 60 days of jail that was reserved. Um, Christine, you have a right to have an attorney to assist you on this. Uh, if you wish to plead not guilty, I can set this for a hearing and appoint an attorney for you. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes, I would plead not guilty. What happened, Matea, if you can tell me with the larceny charge? Um, which larceny no, charge? No, it, it was a driving charge. Oh, um, she pled not guilty um, and has a pretrial date set. I forgot what the date was, Your Honor. The 8th. Thank you. November 8th. All right, uh, Miss Winfrey, you're struggling. 
Uh, we heard from James about your daughter being a subject of truancy petition. He's the only one that got charged. You split up, then you got back together. I'd really like to ask you where you've been for the last six months, but I'm assuming it's not good. I don't, I don't want to do it without your lawyer being here because it's the essence of your failed probation that you never reported and didn't do any of the things you were supposed to do. And he's recommending we just give you 60 days jail and call it good, but we'll get an attorney and set a hearing. I show your address as Athens. That's different than the address that James gave me, which was Fulton. What's your yes. address? The Fulton. All right. Um, the bad news is you're in jail. The good news is all these old warrants got served and eventually they'll come to an end. But right now, a bond is canceled. You have another misdemeanor case pending. You have sentencing pending in another jurisdiction. And I will see if we can get this set sooner rather than later. Frankly, as a practical matter, this isn't going to be very hard to prove it. In a probation violation, you have to prove things beyond a preponderance. And the fact that you didn't show up in February, March, April, May, June, July, or ever thereafter, and didn't show up for your PV hearing, pretty much shows you were off the map. But yeah. there may be some explanation for all of it. So I will see you as soon as they can set the PV hearing. <laughs> So I'm in jail for 60 days? No, 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 it hasn't been determined yet. You may be, but right now we got to have a hearing. All right, you can go with the officer. As soon as we can get a lawyer and get this set for hearing, we'll do that. We're going to talk to Christine Winfrey. She's here with her lawyer, Mr. Tim George. I was looking at this this morning. Let me see if I can get this stuff is out of sequence. The probation violation petition alleges that the defendant was placed on probation for use of methamphetamine and she failed to report on a monthly basis. We scheduled a probation violation arraignment for June 21st and the defendant did not appear. She got picked up on a bench warrant and uh, I saw her on October 25th. She were, was arrested on October 16th in Calhoun County. She had charges in a couple of other jurisdictions. She pled guilty, excuse me, not guilty, sort of by her agreement between me and her. We set uh, a pretrial hearing and appointed Mr. George. He also had a no ops case that's still hanging out there somewhere. Uh, and I canceled your bond. So as of my calculation today, you've got eight days. And if we go back to October 16th, you've got 15 days of credit. Um, Mr. Matt Huff is here and he is the probation agent in this matter. Mr. Tim George has been appointed to represent the defendant and he's here today. Mr. George, what does your client wish to do? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just so the court, um, I know it's a little bit of a confusing fact pattern because Ms. Winfrey originally was the passenger in a vehicle and the driver had methamphetamine. This was a, a use of analogs case. Oh, yes, it, it was. was. Now the probation violation says use of methamphetamine uh, but it's a clonazepam. It is. Yeah. And so I, re I was reading that the actual judgment was uh, a controlled substance and not really very much of it. 
uh, yes, something other than, and it was a 7411 probation. And I just wanted to clarify that. I have had the opportunity to speak with Ms. Winfrey. Um, she's going to acknowledge that she hadn't reported um, from February. Ms. Winfrey, we talked about this at the time of your arraignment. You have a right to have a hearing on this where it must be established beyond a preponderance that you violated your probation. Um, we appointed a lawyer and set it for a hearing. And so we're ready to take testimony if necessary. But you can also simply admit the violation. And then I guess the question will be, what do we do next? So is it your intention to admit that you just stopped reporting? Yes. All right. Uh, anyone threaten you to get you to do that? No, sir. The date just came and I was taking care of my mother and I just forgot about the date. And then when I found out about it, I just told Well, that's that not, not even that one. But the fact that you stopped reporting through this, we hadn't seen you for several months before that. Because I was terrified to go to jail. All right. And here you are in jail. Yeah, so if you'd come in the front door, maybe we would have <laughs> had a whole different direction. All right, uh, and you understand by entering this plea, you're giving up the right to have the probation violation hearing. All right, I talked to you a little bit before Mr. George was here, and I'm always kind of treading on thin ice when I'm talking with unrepresented defendants. So I think the public defender was here um, about where you were going, what you were doing, and we had to kind of sort out where you'd been. So, Mr. George, what can you tell us about her circumstances today? Thank you, Your Honor. Well, in speaking with her, I think she summarized it pretty well. Um, I think what she told me was, I missed the reporting date in February. I freaked out because uh, I thought I was going to go to jail. And, you know, now here I am. So um, I think she's ready to um, just acknowledge this, um, move on. She was put on a 7411 status. So if the court is inclined to revoke the probation, she would lose the benefit of that. I think that is a collateral consequence that the court needs to consider. Um, I had in my original notes, and I said the same to Mr. Hoff, that at the time that we had the sentencing in this case, um, I believe that the judgment ordered 30 days in jail credit, five leaving 25 deferred uh, with a 7411 status. Um, based on Mr. Hoff's recommendation at this point, we would ask the court um, if it's going to revoke the probation to just use that deferred jail time with the credit that she already has. Um, like I said, the, the loss of the 7411 status is a significant consequence here. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Huff, what's your thought here? Um, well, Your Honor, <clears throat> to speak to the original recommendation of 60 days in jail, that's my typical go-to in circumstances where we have a probationer who absconds. Um, in this case, and in most cases, I typically review the judgment ahead of time to see if there was a deferred time. It appears that I missed that. Uh, I believe that if you've deferred 25 days up front, you have, the court has good discretion and familiarity with the case facts at that point in time as far as what's appropriate. So I would defer as well to, to the, um, the deferred days as a recommendation, I guess, as an amended recommendation. The loss of 7411, I think, is more burdensome for Miss Winfrey than um, potentially serving a few more days in jail if, if the court was inclined to go the route of, of 25 days credit, whatever she served so far. Uh, that's all I have. Miss Winfrey, I don't remember if you got everything done because at the very first time you came in here, you had posted a bond in Calhoun and then you sort of went AWOL on both cases. Do you have anything else pending in any other county other than Calhoun? No. And is your Calhoun County stuff completed? I had to uh, go on court on eight on the eighth. It was a bond. I paid that. I and saw that. Now you also have a traffic here and I paid that too. All right, let's see what's going on with that case because I'd like to be it able to take care of that one license. too. Will you go back to Fulton? No, sir. Where will you go? Um, to 305 Edith and Colin. Who is there? My father in law. Yeah, that no ops is still pending November 8th. So you'll be living in Colon. 
Where did you last work? Um, with a cleaning uh, company, cleaning houses. Out of where? Out of Bolton. Just now, I canceled your bond because I wanted you to get some clean time. You seem a lot better today than I did the first time. Um, and where were you during those months that we didn't see you from like February, March, April, May, June? Hiding out in Fulton in Kalamazoo. And just Different trying to county. stay under the radar. Yes, sir. Which were you struggling with, methamphetamine or opioids or both? Uh, both. But part of getting clean and everything is changing your people, places, and things. Yes. So that's why I can't go back to Fulton because I will be doing the same thing over again with those same people. Well, you're wise enough to know that. And I, like I said, you seem a lot better today. Um, is there anything else you want to tell me? I miss my kids very much, and I'm very sorry for all this. Well, John was here the other day. Jimmy? I, I hadn't James? seen him. Uh, what? James. James, yes. For, I used to see him when I was young, and then I hadn't seen him for a long time. And I'm glad they're all here because... Um, Shows you got some support plan for when you get out. But all right, I'm going to do what I told you I was going to do. Although I'm going to give you credit all the way back to when you got picked up in Calhoun because we had a hold on you. So I'm going to order 25 days. Well, I guess I'll call it that. Credit 16, I'll call it 30 days. Credit 21. Leaving nine days to serve, and you'll get some good time calculated in there. So it may be as little as four days, but I'm not sure how the jail's going to calculate this. It wasn't much of a crime that you originally got charged with, it was a felony reduced to a misdemeanor, but. Uh, we tried this probation and it didn't work. I'm going to revoke it. So I'm going to be off your back. Which is good and bad. Loss of 7411 status. They used to suspend your driver's license. It doesn't anymore. It never was connected to driving privileges. But when the legislature was mad at everybody that's addicted to drugs, they suspended their driver's license. They took that out a few years ago, so it won't affect your license, but you have no ops. We'll deal with that no ops case in a week. You'll probably be out of jail by November 8th. So you're going to need to come back for that and take care of that. I don't have a prosecutor here. I would try to take care of it right now and save you a trip. Well, let me talk about it for a minute. You can plead guilty to having no valid operator's license. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 90 days in jail and a fine of up to $100. That would give you credit for the eight days that you've been in jail, but it will put a no operator's license charge on your driver's license and make it more difficult for you to get a license. So if you want to plead to it today, we can do that. If you don't want to enter a plea of guilty, we can leave it set for the pretrial on November 8th. Oh, I said leave it for then. Okay. All right. I'll leave. All right, Ms. Winfrey, I wish you the best. Thank you. I'm off your back. I'm also waiving any additional fines and costs that you owe. I say it's good and bad. It's good that I'm off your back. It's bad that there's not somebody like Matt looking over your shoulder because these substances are so powerfully addictive that I, you're going to get right back in it. But right now you're pretty clear headed and I didn't put you in jail to be mean. I put you in jail because I thought you needed some time to get your head on straight. 
All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.